three years. So we need to finish up the uh, color committee meeting really quickly before we get going here on the real meeting. Not that that isn't a real meeting, but you know what I mean. Um, so what we need to know is the selection of the tile colors and the percentages of those. Um, I think the proposal on the table is to use the copper family and the metallic family only. And I think the proposal is 60% copper, 40% metallic. So if somebody wants to talk about that or change it or suggest something else, you're open to discussion. I was thinking pink. <laughs> okay. All in favor? <laughs> Any further discussion? I didn't hear a second. <laughs> second? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Helpful. There you go. So um, it's a 60-40 with mostly the, the copper, which was the, the rust-looking one. Correct. And none of the green. And none of the green. Can you pass one of the pictures now? There's some extra, extra pictures. This is what we're actually discussing. This one is with an additional color family that brings in a bunch of green. You can't pick the last one. No, you can't pick the last one. That's a good one. Don't even look at it. Isn't that nice? I think so. Is that what we had? <laughs> yeah. Lindsay got all excited for a minute. Oh, I love this one too. Oh, wait, that was the original. Don't, <laughs> don't fill off. I keep telling him to get over it. It's over. <laughs> all right, so if, are there any objections to, to that? So the proposal is for this one? Or this one pretty much. I kind of like this one. Are we okay? Yeah. All right, so do we want to vote on that? Yes. Yeah, I guess I'd, just so I'd, they can see it. <coughs> so, um, so, so this is the if we're taking voting for this a one. Vote, we need a motion and a second. So I guess so. I will we do that. I will motion. motion anything formally? I guess so. No, we haven't. But, but, but well, since you started and we're on camera, we probably should follow <laughs> okay. through. So I'll make the motion. I'll second it. I don't think you can say you're not part of the color committee. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. Yeah. And so the only people that are voting here are the color committee right. people. And uh, so all in, any further discussion about it? Any, any uh, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I'll abstain. <laughs> Okay, so that's the copper family at sixty percent, the metal family at forty percent, and that's we'll reflect that as a as a item in the minutes that the subcommittee that's the tile selection, and we will get that information to um, the contractor yep. ASAP. Okay, we need and to call. We need to check and double check and triple check that we have the right families of tile that the contractor <coughs> orders. Because, um, yeah, that would afford, not be good if they can't afford to mess that up. Do we have an update on our on our schedule? Can we can we call the meeting to order? Can we do this? Uh, yes. Can we so, do this so, in the agenda? So wait, because I'm, we've I'm been not done. All over the I'm, place. I have to finish the color committee meeting. Oh, I thought you did. I'm sorry. So the color committee meeting is finished. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now I'd like to call to order the uh, real meeting, the building committee meeting. Right. Okay. Okay. So, um, we have a, uh, a packed agenda tonight, solid entertainment. <clears throat> so, uh, we have a guest speaker, uh, Chris Carroll from PMA is here. He's going to uh, uh, talk about uh, PMA's uh, extended amount of time spent here and uh, their proposed contract amendment for that. Um, and uh, 
Deb, I'm going to just turn it over to you to talk about the, uh, the first set of okay. items on the agenda. Okay, we're going to go down the agenda. If we go down the agenda and we view the minutes, we'll get to everything that everybody wants to talk about. So if we can just keep it in order, then it'll just, I won't get confused, and that's helpful for me. Okay, um, the other thing that isn't on this agenda is Chris is going to go over the time entitlement review of CTA's uh, delay schedule that they, they submitted in December. So that's not on here, but we'll get to that as well. So why don't I turn it over to David if you want to do the warrant? I do. Um, okay, so today we have uh, warrant voucher number 66, dated April 9, 2014. Two items only. Uh, first one is for advanced presentation systems, $133. The next two are for Deutsch Williams Brooks. First one is for $7,658.50. The second one is for $1,869. Next one, CTA Construction Co. That's for $37,425.03. And what that is, is that is the CCD 95 that you folks reviewed on the meeting on the 26th. We're going to approve that, and we've talked to Rod Hoffman at Deutsch Williams, and we're going to release that check. Dean and I were talking offline before the meeting of how we're going to send that, and we think we're going to have the districts on the check to, to Deutsch Williams. We'll put a cover letter onto it and send it to CTA. So that's just, that's what that value, that value right there is all changes that are not in executed change orders that we're aware of here at the end, inclusive of all credits we deem we're owed, everything. We'll, we'll get pushback, and we've already got pushback from CTA saying they don't agree with CCD 95, but Deutsch Williams wants to show movement on our side, so he wants us to send this check. Okay, okay. so that's all what we talked about. Right, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. <coughs> that's fine. Okay. It's good to rehash that. Yes. Okay. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody understands that uh, that was what th we discussed before. Right. And right. Where and it, and it has not changed. The okay. positions right. haven't changed. The numbers haven't changed. Right. So. That is correct. Uh, the last item is for the Ricciardi brothers for two thousand three hundred fifty dollars for a total of forty-nine thousand four hundred thirty-five dollars and fifty-three cents. I would choose myself from the voting. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Chris, do you want to do our next? Do you want me to just go down? No, keep going. Okay. Um, the next, the couple of the next things on the agenda is um, I wanted to get approval for some not to exceed values for the work we're going to be doing over April break for remediation of the septic structures. Um, Nadine and Diane, I think you two have seen these, or maybe Diane, you haven't. I know maybe you have. Um, the first one is Lakeside Storage has put a proposal together. For $5,960, that's a not to exceed value based on, that's for pumping the two structures, cleaning them, and drying them, initial drying. Now that's based on pumping 17,000 gallons out of those two, the primary and secondary structures. That number will only go down if they don't have to pump out 17,000 gallons worth of stuff. Okay, so, so that's what that is. Um, I can um, I can explain arrows and then I can give a brief schedule update of how this is going to work if, if, if people want to want to want to hear that. Okay, so that's the, the 5960 for Lakeside Sewerage Service. Then the um, Arrow Concrete Products 5,464. That's for his guys to actually go in after the tanks are cleaned. Uh, pumped, cleaned, and initially dried by Lakeside. And then Arrow's going to go down in there, and um, they're going to do any extensive drying on the repair areas that are needed over and above the drying that Lakeside does. That's, gonna, that's in Arrow's price. Uh, they're going to do localized surface preparation for cleaning and grinding or roughing of the, of the contact areas, areas that were areas 
that are going to need um, the remediation material applied. So they'll do that. And then um, most cases require the application of a grout material to fill large gaps and holes, and Arrow's going to do that. They're going to apply uh, a membrane material to all the joints with or without indications of leakage. So they're going to go down in there, and anywhere there's a joint in those, in those two structures, they're going to re-caulk them, if you will, mm -hmm. um, um, because they want to they do it right. Um, that estimate, their estimate there, again, not to exceed value, includes um, Arrow's inspection, all the remediation work, all the product, all the equipment, a final, a final uh, an inspection by Arrow, and then a final test. So, and that is a not to exceed value of 5,464. Now we passed these by Bill Maher at Niche Engineering just to confirm that he thought that for these scopes these were fair and reasonable values and we got a yay from him that he thought that they were. And um, so I have two questions. One is, was, was Lakeside originally involved in the installation of the tanks? No. So they are a new contractor to us? They are the district's maintenance contractor for the septic, they do the pumping. They do the uh, twice see. a year pumping and everything. Okay. They were the ones that discovered there was a problem. Okay. <clears throat> right, on the 23rd of December. And then um, Arrow is coming in. Their price is based on some understanding of what the problem is. They, those, they built, they manufactured those septic structures. So they're confident uh, they were, this will fix the problem. Yes, Nick is very confident. And when they, if they find that one of the that one of the, the tanks are cracked, then, as opposed not at the joint, but as someplace else, it's, it, that's another issue altogether. Right. But I think there was a, 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 the lakeside didn't see anything like that when they were in the tank before. Okay. So I don't think they anticipate that as a problem. Okay. So, but just to go, this is, this is gonna be important for you, Diane, and, and maybe Nadine, is what, 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 what's happening here is, um, you know, we have the guys coming in on the 17th to strip that gym floor. I hope I talked to Nick this this afternoon, and I hope that doesn't screw this up for sure. not using the water. Because once you guys leave here on Thursday, there's no water. No more. It's off. Everything's off. We want to shut everything down. But what we we want <clears throat> is once all the kids are out, when everybody's out of the school, we want Rick and his team to turn on every single thing in this building and mm -hmm. flush this system out. Okay. Flush this system out as best we can because there's a concern and that's another issue that we'll get onto the, the drainage the waste lines in here and there's some issue with that that ggd reviewed again we'll get into that but we want to try to make sure that there's nothing sitting in any of these pipes that when we take the system offline for seven days can sit there and and expand and then when we turn the system back on it's just a plug and everything gets pushed back so we, we, want, we, want, we want Rick to just blow out the place okay. as, as he can. How are they going to strip the floors with the water off? They're not going to be able to do that. I think what Arrow will do is uh, they'll put a... I need to call them. I, I need to call them. We, I need to call them. Yeah, you, you just got to coordinate with them, but I think Arrow will put a, a ball inside the inlet mm -hmm. into the tank. They're going to put a... Arrow will supply Lakeside with a rubber plug yeah. on the inlet side. Because what's going to happen is we're going to shut every down Thursday, then Lakeside's going to come out here and start pumping at 7 a.m. on Friday, good Friday, because you guys aren't in school. Then Case is going to be on site shortly after Lakeside. They're going to remove the inlet elbow and the outlet filter. Yeah. And then Arrow's going to supply Lakeside with a rubber plug on the inlet side. Arrow's going right. to pump that full of air yeah. to plug that up. Now, the other thing that Nick said is that, let's say somebody comes in and uses the toilet. It's not the end of the world. We do have some storage behind the ball, be behind the ball in, in the pipes and in the manholes. Right. So the other thing they can do is if it does start to build up, if they have to use water, Lakeside could suck out of the manhole. Okay. So that, you know, if all of a sudden they start getting flow coming down the pipe, and you know there's capacity in the pipe basically, and if they <coughs> they start getting too much capacity, too much product in the pipe, Lakeside could just suck it right out of the manhole. Okay. I I lost track of the redoing of the floors because of this. The biggest problem with that is if we have to re schedule that. When are you guys going to have three days of downtime where you don't go in the gym? 
it's going to screw up the whole. So remember, we went through that whole right. rigmarole to get sure. the schedule it was right. A week. It was a week, wasn't it? Might have been whatever it was. It was four days or whatever, whatever the duration was. It was it was an, a longer period of time than you guys have in the normal course of, of, right. of the school year to not be able to use the gym. So that's why we picked April break. Right. So if you can't do it that, then then we'd have to wait until after the school year's out. Which will blow up the rest of the schedule. June, which would mess up the schedule, right? Trying to get them to do it three times within the three-year maintenance period. That I guess that's, we can have that conversation offline. Yeah. Let me call New England Sports Floors okay. and see if it's uh, if it's a a deal breaker not to have water. It, it might be. It, it, I think they can, as long as coordinated properly. I think it'll work. And I think that even if that means that you have to pay Lakeside a little bit more money to pump out the manhole, you know, have them come every morning to suck it out. It's like a septic system, probably two hundred dollars to suck it out. And you know, but talk to them first. Yeah. I'll talk. Lock, to Lakeside's going to be on site. They're going to have their truck here. They're going to have a vac truck here. They can back out. You know, I'm going to talk to them. See if they'll throw it in there. I mean, right. they're your service right. provider. We'll see what they can do for us. Right. <clears throat> and I think if it's, okay. I think it's a good point is that they brought it up, and I think if they coordinate it properly, they can do that. Okay. Deb, I also just want to clarify because we are on camera for anybody that's watching or hearing these quoted amounts, that we don't need to be putting it out to bid or anything like that. So I just want to. Just for those that are listening right. or could say they violated the procurement laws or no, whatever, we no, have not, not violated not these anything. Values. With these values, we are fine by going with these people because it's sound business right. practice. It's a sound business practice. That's correct. So I guess what we're looking to do here is to get the building committee to approve these not to exceed values so that Cheryl, Sharon can write the PO. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion about that? I will say that um, these costs, we will ultimately go after these costs as mm -hmm. failed workmanship um, and expect to recoup these costs in the future. Not a guarantee, but that's an expectation here is that we would recoup these costs. These are not anticipated to be our costs. Okay. So they're either warranty or failed work workmanship either way. Right. If a Fiero finds that it's their fault that the tanks failed, they won't charge you for right. that. Right. Um, Lakeside obviously has nothing to do and they, they would, would need to be recompensed. But if it's found that perhaps to, that, they, that it wasn't the ground around the tanks weren't compacted correctly, and they can determine that, then that would go back onto CTA. So those kind of things. I, I, but either way. But, but I think it's going to be incredibly difficult if there's not a crack in the tank to figure out what caused the, 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 the leakage in the joints. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, I don't Settled. know. But something did. Yeah, but, but if it's, it's settled, Jimmy, wouldn't we see I think wouldn't the, we see cracks in the sidewalks and in the granite curbing? And no, it doesn't, so, it doesn't need to settle that much. I mean, Settles a quarter inch. Water's going to go but, through that. But, but how are we going to be able yeah. to say that? The answer for me is that the district didn't cause it to fail. So we're going to get the money from somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, that needs to go on the roadmap. It's not on the roadmap. Hmm? I've installed those tanks, many of them, and typically they don't hold the water the first time. You have to seal them. And uh, I don't know if they did do the water test. And if they didn't do a water test, it's probably the reason why. They did a, they did a vacuum. My vacuum understanding test. is they vacuum they test vacuum that test. failed and then redid it. I'm not sure. I don't remember that. But that could be. I mean, the vacuum test is, uh, is harder to do than the water test. So uh, that'd be, be hard. curious. It's probably less expensive because they would have had to pay Boils oh, and right. for you know for the water. twenty gallons, you know, thirty thousand gallons of water. Right, right. I, I wish it was done. I, I just yeah, the, the water test is the, is the way to do it. And then, uh, okay, well, well, we understand that, and the whole roadmap to close out, which we went over <coughs> in the meeting on the third. Uh, you guys, I sent the, uh, you all got the the spreadsheet. We're gonna have to put this in there. You know, if you guys are looking to try to recoup these costs, then then I don't th I don't think we had those in there before. Yeah, so uh, it's not on there. Okay, so 
<coughs> we'll just have to update this. We'll have to update with the updates. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So the motion's on the table. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Chris Carroll, um, and he's going to present some information regarding PMA's additional time spent doing construction administration. I'm not really a guest speaker. I'm just standing in for uh, Paul Queenie tonight. Who, uh, yeah. Do they all have this stuff? Yeah, they do. Oh, it's, okay. it's, I'm sorry. It's attached to their uh, their PAT bundle. Sorry, Chris. Um, so I'm in the awkward position of presenting to you, to you guys uh, two amendments for additional services based on the extension of our time on the job um, as a result of the delays that have been incurred uh, through the uh, difficult time we've had with CTA. Our original contract with the district was developed uh, a number of years ago in the original contract basically ran out through uh, final completion that was planned back in August of 2013. Uh, and as you all know, unfortunately, we're still here with many issues that are above, above and beyond the normal construction of a job. Um, the PMA has not invoiced you guys since September or August of last year? August of 2013. Uh, so we've been out here just working along, doing everything we can to get the job done, get it closed out, and to deal with all the different issues that have come up. Uh, things like the septic, things like the siding, uh, and numerous other legal issues that we're trying to work through with legal counsel, with uh, Rod Hoffman and the district. Um, as a result of that, We've incurred significant costs since September of 2013 um, between Deb and Paul's time on the job. Um, and if we've kind of broken it into two segments. One is from September uh, 2013 through February of this year. Uh, we quantified the actual hours that Deb and Paul have spent on the job um, above and beyond the original contract value. And then the second amendment is actually looking forward where we still have work to go to close out the job with things like the septic issue and the siding, uh, the porcelainosa tile effort to uh, get that installed under a separate contract. And <clears throat> what I want to just kind of do with you is review the amendments. I expect that uh, if you haven't seen them yet, you will want to review them as a committee. Um, Basically, two amendments. Amendment number 12. You guys don't have the amendments. So I will uh, just review these and I'll give them to Dean and uh, deal with them. So the, the first amendment 12, again, is from September of 2013 through the end of January 2014. And it's based on actual hours built uh, to the job by Deb and uh, Paul. And it's based on actual hours. It's not a lump sum or a guesstimate. It's based on actual timesheet hours that they've got, uh, that we have all the data for. Uh, and that is in the value of $147,280. And that equates to, uh, just the hour total, uh, it's 1104 hours of time between Paul and Deb. So that's hours that have already been incurred uh, by Paul and Deb uh, from September through uh, January. The Second Amendment, which is Amendment 13, uh, starts February 1st and projects out through the balance of this effort to get this work closed out, as well as deal with the new contract that's in place for the installation of the siding, uh, which would include Deb's time and uh, some of Paul's time, and uh, I think a clerk, if needed, yes. on the job during the installation of the siding. We have a clerk here full time when they're 
on site doing that installation. We understood that that's what you guys were looking for. For five weeks. Uh, you got. Uh, We've got actually two months in there. What, uh, July what, and August? July and August. So, so the, the installation is six weeks. So we have July and August. We have eight weeks. Okay. But amendment oh, we thirteen. Get, we would get actually yes. An yeah. actual say, right. This, this amendment amendment thirteen is more of a projection going okay. forward, and uh, I would expect it to be less. Than yes, that. Okay. it would be. That's a not to exceed, and that's worst case scenario with monies for. Construction administration of the rain screen project, as well as I have money in there to be out here to try to close this thing out. I don't know what CTA is going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. So basically, that would be legal support. Legal support. I, I, I'm still. I'm almost done, but I have. I don't have all closeout documentation done. We don't have the commissioning done. You know, waiting for CTA to do that stuff. Okay. It's minimal. But it's minimal, and I, I had a discussion with Dean earlier regarding overlap of some of the base contract scope that we own, such as some of the closeout activities. Um, and I will get Dean a uh, list of those items that uh, that we own under base contract, so I can try to ensure you that we're not double dipping, we're not looking to overlap <coughs> work or scope, and that. Uh, what we're, what we're seeking is just based on actual extra hours and effort that were not contemplated under the original contract. And I'll get you a, a breakdown of that as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so Amendment 13, again, is a, a forecasted uh, effort, and it takes the construction admin piece, which is closing out, supporting legal, doing whatever it takes to get rid of CTA off the job, um, that comes out to $94,696. And then the second effort, which is a pure projection as well, is the uh, construction admin of the rain screen reinstallation from February, which includes the procurement efforts and contracts and everything else, going forward through September 30th when the siding should be completed. Uh, and that's I'm not sure the actual hours on that projected, but that adds up to 69,608. Yeah. So, as I said, well, I have, I have a range yeah, um, there's a table in here where Deb has broken out those projected hours, and again, it's not to exceed values that are projected, and we will do everything we can to come in well under that. Um, and uh, like I said, I will also provide Dean with a, a breakdown of a scope versus extra scope that we're looking at for these tasks. So that... So Chris, actually, could you just um, reiterate what the 94K was? The 94K um, is the construction admin that takes you from basically February 1st through um, Deb is projected September 30th. Right when we're hoping that signing will be done, legal issues will be done, uh, commissioning but, but will close that, out. But that's not signing. That's the legal issues. That's okay. the so waistline backup, the fume hoods, the lighting, the grading, the septic structures, yeah. you know, the, what other, what, any other curveballs that CTA throws to us or that we get thrown from the building. Okay. So it's from February 1st this year? Yes. Through... Projected through, through September, right? Okay. And again, it wouldn't be; it would only be you would only be billed for actual hours spent out here. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if our hours are less than what's projected, then so if um, so, let, let's take the septic tank for mm -hmm. and, as an example. So Deb spent a significant amount of time organizing that, but it's. Uh, let's assume it's failed workmanship on somebody's part, I don't know whose part, but um, where we are planning to recoup those costs from that contractor. How do your costs relate to us recouping the money from the contractor responsible for the failed installation? I, I would identify it as an added cost that you would try to recoup from that contractor. And what's the likelihood that we would be able to do that? Uh, it depends on what they find when they open up the tanks. If it's, uh, you know, workmanship, as I said, with the settlement. So, I mean, we're going to struggle to even get the failed workmanship argument through, let alone adding. 
uh, instruction administration, administration on top to of it. it yes. uh, but shouldn't, we be able, shouldn't we be able to go after CTA for all of this? Uh, mm -hmm. If you I, can I demonstrate that it's failed workmanship, yeah, I don't know. Uh, there should be an ability to go that's after what I hope for. I think you mean every single dime of both of these amendments. Right, mm -hmm. that's what I mean, because they should be here Somebody handling from CTA, from CTA right. handling all these issues. Yeah, and that's kind of part two of what I wanted to talk about was the time entitlement analysis, so I'll get into that in a minute. And that kind of, the intent of liquidated damages on a contract <coughs> is to pay for the costs that are incurred by the district when the schedule goes beyond the contract dates, mm -hmm. which includes architect fees, consultant fees, and whatever other expenses are incurred. Um, it's established early on before the project ever starts, and it was established at $2,500 a day uh, for every day that they're late to substantial completion on phase one and then again on phase two. And in the roadmap, there was, uh, based on the dates that substantial completion on phase one should have occurred November 1st of 2012, and I believe the actual date was uh, December 10th. So that's 39 days late. So you multiply the 39 times 2,500 gave you 97,500 bucks. That's held back from CTA. That was already held back from CTA? It's currently being held from Okay. Yes. That's phase one. That's and the LDs for phase one? Correct. Yeah. Was 97K? Yep. 97,000. And that, and that um, includes your reanalysis of, of, or not? No, not yet. I'll not get yet. to that. But just to explain. And yep. then, Phase two, um, their contract date was June 30th of 2013, <coughs> and I think we're projecting 12.5. That hasn't actually that, been issued yet. It hasn't. Substantial completion for phase two has yet to be issued. Technically, but we're thinking it might be around December 5th of 2013, potentially. That's the date of yeah. the civil engineer's affidavit. Yep. Um, which would be 158 days late, times 2,500 is $395,000. Um, so that that money is also being withheld from CTA. True. Have they have they uh, requested it? The, they would the, like to get paid in full. Yes. Yeah. The, so they don't believe they're later. <laughs> no, they they don't believe they've done anything wrong out here. Well, they do, but they don't tell us that. Right. No, they gave us a requisition for March that included changes that they've never submitted to us. Yeah. You know, and uh, doesn't include any liquidated damages, doesn't include any credits for the fact that they didn't have a second super out here, doesn't include the credit for the floor protection that they didn't provide, none of that. And they, but they, has a $202,000 acceleration PCO in it, which we won't even go there. We don't need to talk about that because that's just not even it's false. Right? It's, just, it's just bogus. So as part of the recouping the cost of things like this, that is the intent of LDs. Right. Um, and then in the case of the um, tank, if it's deemed to be poor workmanship, you'd add that on. That would be additional monies that you would seek to get back as well or not pay them. And so was just being devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. um, we're going to shrink the phase one LDs yes. based on your analysis. And um, there's obviously going to be some level of pushback on the phase two LDs. Um, phase two, just from what we've looked at so far in the analysis, is very little to document them getting time on phase two. Okay. So I would expect most of that LD, to at least from our side, to to be uh -huh. um, And um, and so what you're saying here is that 300k of that. Uh, at a high, a high water mark anyway, you're right. expecting that to come down, but 300K of that goes yeah. to you guys. Uh, that's what we're requesting, yes. And that's, the second half is projected, and certainly we're looking to minimize that. And, and what other costs are we incurring um, outside of you guys uh, that we would expect to get? Reimbursed for. We have a proposal from HMFH for their services as well. Um, we're still looking All to get some. All the way through the end of the rain screen. Do we have a number for you guys? I'm not, so. I'm not sure what you've submitted in the entirety. Well, we're getting that together because, right. um, yeah. 
and you guys are putting together supporting documentation and for our span yeah. so far previous. Right. Okay. And so are the LDs, I guess the, the, the bottom line question is uh, when, when all this is said and done and uh, we have some number of LDs in our pocket but not this full 500K, are we going to have enough to cover these costs? So then at that point, and uh, unfortunately you'd have to look to see if there's contingency. I mean that's the only other source that... Well, we'll have the, I, I'm, well, I'm I think not you, overly we, concerned that we'll have the money. You're asking, do, I, do we I'm have the money from CTA I'm to asking, cover this cost? do we have the ability to recoup what we really are owed here? Uh, you have the roadmap that we had created with all the different costs that are being withheld. Uh, so you have part of that is the LDs. You've got the monies for the rain screen that are being withheld. Um, you have the uh, credits. Well, the I credit. Think, I think. I think what he's asking is, after you do your analysis, mm -hmm. at the twenty-five hundred dollars, and stop me if I'm wrong. At the twenty-five twenty-five hundred dollars a day, let's say it's only X number of days for phase one, and only X number of days for phase two, times twenty-five hundred. Is that whatever that number is? It's going to cover our cost and their costs, or is it going to be smaller? I think that's what you're asking. That's exactly. What you're okay. Well, it was, five, it was almost 500000 of. But, but that's, that's, that's holding before PMA completes the delay schedule analysis, which Christopher's well, almost done with. Some of that 97K on the Phase 1 stuff is going to get eroded, and probably some of the 395K on the Phase 2 is going right. to get eroded by some claims or whatever. Whatever. And, uh, um, you know, and so let's say that ends up, the combination yeah. of those two ends up being 400 k and PMA is taking 300k. We still have HMFH to pay, and we still have Deutsche Williams to pay. I, although I doubt we're going to ever recoup legal fees. Right. I, I don't mean to speak for you, Chris, but I don't know if we know the answer to that question right now. I think we have to wait till the delay analysis is complete. We have to see HMFH's complete cost with their backup. And um, I mean, my experience with recouping legal fees is that you it don't get them. Doesn't happen. Yeah. So let's let's ignore that. So I, let, let's just say on paper it would appear it's very close right. or slightly over. Yeah. Okay. But because there's LDs in there, you could never go with the actual cost. You have to go with LDs right. because you 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 put yeah. LDs in the contract. Okay. Right. Okay. How can how can CTA dispute the uh, the um, certificate of, com of completion? Like uh, the dates. What what they're doing is they're saying we had so many changes that it pushed out it pushed out the, the contract right. milestone well, dates. Did they request it. time when they when they no, requested they the change on their rights? Huh? They reserved well, their rights. Right. Right. But that's not allowed in our contract. You know, this is the other thing, though. I know that's that the CTA whole. is playing that game with us, but honestly, they're playing it in Douglas right now too, because Douglas Middle School. They were supposed to get, um, that was supposed to be done February 1st. Now they're being promised July 1st, and the roof has leaked four times with over hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Mm -hmm. So CTA so is doing the same up. game to them. They're doing it to us. It's just at some point, I mean, when do we say enough is enough? I mean, well, I, I think when we fill out their uh, analysis, the DCAM certification. Certification. certification, we have to be honest with DCAM and Right, given the proper scores, because that's the only thing that's going to you know, preclude CTA from continuing bidding public work. But you know, I mean, I, I think the. Uh, You know, the, 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 as we said in the last time we talked um, with the lawyers and stuff, I, you know, the days of discussing this with CTA are over. We're now in the land of, you know, basic financial um, uh, analysis and, you know, the end game here, is, mm -hmm. you know, which is just going to be us deciding on numbers and then them claiming, you know, uh, you know, whatever they do legally to dispute it. And we're just going to have to, you know, get through that. But I mean, you know, um, to me it doesn't feel like there's any more 
discussion with CTA about, well, you know, okay, maybe you can submit this and we'll be okay. I mean, that's all done. done. Yeah, so we're, we're done with all that. So I presented the two amendments, but I'd ask that you consider them. Uh, I'm not sure what your discussion process will be, so. Uh, well, I, I think we should, we should spend a little time discussing it tonight, since we're all here. So what I'd probably like to do is ask the four of you guys to uh, skip out for a little bit. Would you mind doing that? And let us have a little discussion over this. And uh, and then we'll come back. Have to call executive session. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you want yeah, me you to? You have to call executive session if you're excusing people because it's on the camera anyway. So oh. they actually have a right to sit and listen. Oh. Unless you're going right. to go into executive session. Well, what do you, how do we? Do you want to do that? I think if you're going to talk about strategy. And a and a contract it is appropriate. It is appropriate okay. time to do an executive session. Okay. So do that? I don't know if you want to go through the rest of this uh, or at the end call right. an executive said. session. You want to do that? Why okay. don't we go through the Why rest? Why don't we do that and then we'll go into executive session? Because you can't come back from or can you? You can. Oh, okay. You make a motion to come okay. back into open, open back up. More time okay, but I'm fine with continuing on. on the rest of the I didn't uh, bring enough copy, sorry about that. What, what you have here is the uh, draft time entitlement analysis. CTA had submitted a scheduled <laughs> impact that said they would do all the time and more. Um, beyond the substantial completion date. So where they completed on phase one in December, they, they submitted that they were due out until March of the following year. Um, their, their submittal was not a very good submittal. It had a lot of different issues and technicalities in it that would make it invalid. Um, what I did is I actually went through the actual issues that occurred on the project, worked through with Paul and Deb on uh, the history of actual delays that occurred during phase one, and worked through their schedule to identify those, those issues. Uh, so you'll see that, and again, this is just kind of a draft report that summarizes the findings. Uh, beginning on page two is where the analysis begins. I go through the most critical paths that are identified starting on page four. And I get down to uh, the top of page six, where we actually find an issue where they might be entitled to some potential uh, delay time for phase one only. And that's related to the resilient flooring and humidity in the building and the slabs. Uh, that's about the only thing that I've found that even merits any time consideration for the whole phase one. And when you look at that, it would indicate that they might be due, and it's, it's not saying it delayed the project, but it was concurrent to their own delays. And in that situation, you would give them consideration of time only, no money for damages. But um, it looks like seven to 24 days of delay time could be granted to CTA in phase one. And uh, that is it. Uh, so when you look at that, as Dean mentioned, your phase one liquidated damages that were 97,500 would potentially, and again, this is not definitive, it would be negotiated with them. Uh, it might be reduced down by 24 days or $60,000. So your 97,500 would get reduced down to possibly 37,500. And again, that, that's being uh, about as fair as I could be with them looking at realistic issues that delayed the construction. And then as I mentioned, the phase two, uh, we've yet to find anything that would warrant. Uh, so if, if that's concurrent, not to interrupt you, but if that's concurrent with their own delays, is that being overly generous? Uh, depending on the legal perspective, how you look at it, uh, concurrent delay is usually you, you look at time considerations only that never get a cent for any other costs that okay. they say they incur. So it's a negotiation point, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, in primary, as you mentioned, concurrent time, the whole concrete repair in the auditorium is what is running neck and neck with all of the, okay. the delays in the project. So that's, that's a hard one for them to overcome. Okay. <clears throat> Um, phase two, again, as I mentioned so far, we're just not seeing any issue of merit that would 
consider uh, granting CTA any type of time entitlement. But, but CTA position on phase two is that they, uh, that all of their delays were justified, right? And so what, how, how could they argue, I'm, I'm not clear, you know, usually when there's some gray areas, it's gray. This feels like, you know, we're at 100% and they're at 0%. How can we be that far off? Uh, just, What's their argument? They work on that one. They're just, they don't. They're just throwing darts. And they're, what they're trying to say is that phase one was delayed by four months, but it wasn't. And then they just keep building off that artificial impact, right. which is why their analysis was no no good. And well, then so, okay. Okay. they'll say they accelerated from that delay back to the dates they achieved. Did the phase one delay have any impact on phase two starting? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right? Not at all. No. So it's again, it's just they're projecting impacts that did not occur, and then they build off those for phase right. two. And are you guys confident that in a mediation, that's the way a mediator yeah. would see it? Yes. I mean, their delay schedule, I won't get into too much minutia, but they have uh, the temporary fence for phase two being installed April 24th. We, we have backup documentation that it was installed on the 16th of January. They said that ab abatement started in May, th May 3rd. We know they were in the building January 17th. They've got demo starting June 7th. We have an email from Randy Smith that says demo is going to start April 1st. That's when you had the kids go over and saw yeah. them hit the wrecking ball. So like Chris was saying, this is all piggybacked on the delays of phase one. Th this is false. It's, it's false. false. Okay. Right. All right. So Dean, to your point, the phase one LDs might be reduced uh, by about 60,000. And the phase two, I don't see anything of merit at this point. The only thing, in the interest of full disclosure from those of us that have been on the projects, that they, is they might cry that this substantial certificate of substantial completion is dated December 5th. Right. They As might opposed to what, what they date. think it should be. Well, they asked for it to be, didn't they ask for it to be August 30th? August 30th. Yeah, August 30th. Which they were not done. And they hadn't even asked, we hadn't even received a as-built of the site at that point. Right. Uh, so there were some delays from people like Mitch, and, or maybe not Mitch, or pe people out doing site work. There were some delays that were incurred there, well, right? Well, there were, there, the, the CTA say there was delays in review of the site as built, uh -huh. because their position is that Niche Engineering asked for things on those as built that were not owned. However, Niche just recently, I think it was a December correspondence from CTA that Niche did answer at the end of March at, at, to the nth degree, addressing each and every point with, I read it, I thought it was a really solid argument. Right. I mean, everything that, we've, that he's asked for is in the contract documents, and not only required by the contract documents, but required by DCR. The order so, of conditions, right. 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 So he was very adamant about that from the beginning, and they kept saying, well, we don't need to show this, we don't need to show that. And he eventually allowed them to present to, at substantial completion, to, give, to at December 5th, to accept what they had given, but still requiring more information on the as build as DCR would require. And we still haven't received an approved, you know, they just re resubmitted just submitted. Uh, the as build, and it still wasn't. I mean, if right. it wasn't, the simplest things weren't corrected. It's in that 10 day letter. So, uh, okay. But this, this um, 395,000 figure is based on the December 5th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Completion. That's a true statement. Okay. From 628 or 630, whatever the case might be. 628 to, to December 5th. Okay. Yeah, 628. Okay. No doubt it's gonna, they're going to argue and fight and kick. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm expecting them to say we don't know any of these total period. Right. But, you know, they have to have respectable arguments in the sense like they right. don't have many. In this schedule, so. Yeah. so I just wanted to present those two amendments to you. I feel awkward doing it, but um, that's why I made him do it. <laughs> uh, it's just a difficult situation that I think we all find ourselves in, yeah. uh, given this project and how it's. Uh, is the expectation that when the rain screen is done, 
that we're done, that everything is done? Is that really the last button up item yep. to get done? I hope so. I hope we have everything but I the mean, range screen buttoned up that long that before that. Be the case? Where we're well, doing the range, range screen range. separate of CTA, that's that when that's done, that's done. That's done. The yeah. CTA should all be being closed out or right. dealt with well before that. Concurrently or before that. There was I there was some piece of something that John McNamara sent to, to George Williams, I sent it over to you, and that the whole range screen wasn't going to be resolved to like 2016. They had all the dates of, so there might be legal stuff going sure, on. Sure, no, I understand that. But the range that screen, but physically in the building, years. we should be out of here. We should be gone. Yeah, I just want you guys to go home. I want you guys to go home and right. you know come back and support us for our legal issues. But um, we can't keep doing this. We agree. We're trying to help work with Rod to try to figure out the best strategy to. Okay. Let's proceed. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. Okay. Just going through this quickly. I just want to, if you look at the, the um, just if I could just say one. These copies of the time of oh, are for your eyes only. Uh, if you're not going to use it, I'd like to take it back because. Potentially, it could be a legal document. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, okay. The time entitlement piece. It's not for public consumption. Um, okay. Well, we just discussed it in public, unfortunately. Right, but I'm just right. saying. Yeah, the details are in here. Um, but here. okay, so. Um, it's going to finalize the CTA eventually. It's yep. just not in a final form. Right. That's right. It's a draft. Okay. So yes, you can have these back. It's a public document because it was dispersed in public in a public meeting, so it does technically become a public document at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, a, it's in draft form. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's so also the public, uh, public needs to be aware that this is a draft yes. form and yeah. is subject to change, mm -hmm. um, possibly, you know, substantially. Mm -hmm. Just, we, we put on the agenda here some of the items that we're trying to sort out in the building. So um, we'll start first with the waistline backup. Um, we had GGD, the, the plumbing engineer, come out here and look at these. Um, I believe it was, it was yesterday, or no, it was the day before, right? And they prepared um, a site report. Have you had an opportunity to review yeah, it? Just jump in here. I'm trying to going to try to summarize this. Basically, what GGD he was checking outside, the right? Building, not inside the building. Because the, without the backup, there's nothing to check in the building. There's nothing to see in the building. Everything's under the under the slab. So what they what he saw is that there are there are drainage issues in the set in the manhole structures outside the building. Right. And he made recommendations as right. to what he wants to see done right. in order to make things work more smoothly out there. And he feels what's going on out there affects what's happening in the right. building. How can that be? Wouldn't they have to be like totally filled up? And then all the capacity in the pipes have to be totally filled well, up? Well, it's slowing the water. Down. It's slowing the flow That's down, right. which slows the ability, which limits the ability of the water to carry the waste through the building. So it'll get stopped within the building because the water isn't flowing at its optimum rate. So when they were doing this the other day, I was here, and they opened up you know, the covers and we were looking, and he actually took a piece of toilet paper and he put it down in, the, in one of the holes and watched. It actually sat there for a while before it finally got caught into another stream to go down. So there's an issue because that should never be even sitting at that mm. point. And at one of the holes, what they were looking at, there shouldn't even have been water at that level of the capacity that it's at. So it's kind of just, it's going back and forth this way before it gets caught in another stream to go out. So there's something happening right out here by the by Probably, the probably a, uh, not enough pitch on the pipe, basically. Correct. That's what I mean, if you look at their as-built, it, sh it shows that. 
his as builds. I looked at the as builds, and it shows the pitch is uh, is it's not per plan. And it's That's the invert where it goes in. The invert's yeah. there, yeah. In in the grade, the the, the slope of the pipe. Mm -hmm. And how how can that be? Isn't this all inspected before it gets closed up? Yeah, I believe this plumbing inspector <clears throat> didn't did inspect. He had to inspect everything before he allowed it to be closed up. And so how do you end up with a pipe with inadequate pitch or, or not pitch? No, I, I didn't. I don't think know. It's it's not not the, pitch. the plumbing pitch. inspector won't check, check the pitch. So what does he check? Just well, if it's properly installed pipes by you being know, yeah. glued together properly right. and stuff like that. And, um, and I think they made some changes to the plan too, right? Well, they moved the septic structure. They moved the right, septic structure. Right, right. But, but it, it was all, to, I mean, it, the pitches were still working. Yeah, it was all supposed to be. But I, I think he's not really saying that it's the slope of the pipe, that it's, it's kind of, the, there's a lot of places where it's not smooth, the mortar's protruding, mm -hmm. it's catching. Do so you take pictures? Is that a picture? There's there? a video. Yeah. Did There's video, video that I can't get to, but did you read them CDs? No. No. So they ran a camera up the pipe? No, 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 no. I'll no. no. show you this. Just this in is the manhole. Just in the manhole. He asked for a video once it's done. He also believes there may be a blockage between two of the manholes out there. That right. There may be something in there, so it needs to be uh, snaked out. Oh, yeah. If you look well, at says, the, I don't know if the picture's there, but yeah. when we looked at the, the picture and they took a picture, like when we were just looking down, straight down, there's a lot of mortar mm -hmm. that's sitting there. Right. Yeah. So they think that a lot of the mortar could have been caught in these pipes that are causing In the inverts are causing all right. the stuff to, so what, what he says is we believe the poor flow uh, is contributing to the clogging experience in the building. The general contractor should be instructed to clear all debris and mortar from the invert channels and invert channels made smooth. Once complete, the exterior piping system should be flush clean and video inspected to confirm blockages have been removed. Right. So that's what he's suggesting, that somebody go down in each of these manholes yeah. and clean out those inverts because what Chris said is they should be as smooth, those inverts, those concrete made inverts should be as smooth as the inside of that pipe and they're not right now. They're not. There certainly shouldn't be a half a pipe of water. Right, and there's, right. I mean, if there's loose mortar in there, it might get caught up in all the filters and baffles and stuff. Well, I don't, I don't know if the mortar, if the mortar was loose, it was stuck to the inverts, causing stuff to get stuck on it. Right. To, so it wasn't flowing. I see. So that's freely. where you expect the toilet paper and stuff like right. that to get mm -hmm. caught up. Right, it's getting caught. Mm -hmm. I see. But I'm not quite sure how he explains that there's water in those where there shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, right. there shouldn't be standing water. I think standing that's water was reserved in the manhole. Water was introduced from the. He doesn't. I don't, did he really address Alan why he there's standing water in there? I don't think that he did. We, we can ask him. But we can I, ask I, him. Yeah, you probably want to ask him to to report on that too, because that was a big thing that he had stated that day. Is the the amount of water that's there? He said that you should not have this this amount of water here. So people have said up until now that this was an inside issue and it was, you know, feminine products and things like that that were in the pipes. And is that no longer the case? Nobody well, no, I, I, think that, I don't, know. I don't, know. I don't, I don't think it's yeah. just an outside issue. I think uh, it, it contributes to what's going on inside. I'm not sure that it's been, I don't feel comfortable that it's been resolved as to what's going on inside. And, and but, so how do we get to that point though? I mean, if these guys- Well, I think that we have to- uh, I think we can utilize this to issue to CTA because the final point is, it's our opinion, he's the engineer of record, the conditions observed and noted above clearly indicate work that does not conform to project specification, AKA defective work not remedied. Oh, can I ask you why isn't um, case fixing this? They're the ones who installed it. Well, 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 well that's where I'm going with this. Yeah, they, they should be the ones fixing it. These conditions are impacting the district's day-to-day -day operation of the facility and require immediate corrective response by the general contractor. Upon completion of all corrective work, all video inspections performed shall be submitted to the design team for review and comment. So the purpose of this, and stop me if you want to say something else, is we wanted this from the engineer of record so that the designer of records to say, CTA, you need to come out here, you need to clean out these inverts, you need to make them smooth, you need to flush out the system out there, and then you need to camera it. 
the CTA and theoretically we as, and as a warranty or defective work, whichever we want to, however right. we want to, it's, it's, it's either covered under warranty or it's defective work, not remedy. So that was, Is that was CTA sort of aware of this problem. Yes. Say that again? They are. They are. I mean, they, we were here when we did the inspection of the inverts, and they were aware that there were issues with what the design invert was and what the actual invert was at the at these manholes. Uh, whether they're they're not aware that this that we now feel like there's issues with the flow in those areas. Uh, but so, so uh, what I'm uncomfortable with here is that I don't think we have a full handle on, on the problem. Oh, we don't. So, we don't. We do. And, I and think that concerns me to, to be, uh, you know, waving our hands and go fix this and go fix that, and we don't really have a full handle on this. And not that I don't think that they need to fix this stuff, but um, we need to know that when they fix it, that it's fixed. And it doesn't sound to me like we're all the way there. Well, I don't feel comfortable with that. Chris, I mean, I'll have to ask Chris Garcia about that, how, what he thinks will happen once this is fixed. Does he think that all the problems in the building will go away? Well, who, who, so I would expect that somebody would come out and inspect this, sounds like Chris did, and report on here's the problem. And it sounds like they did half of that. Well, I, I think you need to correct that problem first before you can look into the building, because that's the downstream problem and it's not going downstream. So it's coming out of the building, but it's not going to the septic system. So you have a six inches of water. He's got between three and four inches of water in the pipe, he said. So it's not going down the pipe. So it's not in the building, it's not going out. So it's got to go clean the pipes, just like they said. Uh -huh. Clean those pipes out, make sure they're flowing happens. properly. Right. If those are flowing properly. So you just basically do this step by step. You basically right. say, we know we need to do this. Fix that. We understand that there may be more to this. <clears throat> and then we look into the, the next step after we've done the first step. I guess. Okay. No, I, that's. I don't know if they did the proper testing, like the. that they did the things that they list, but uh, I don't know how we could check that either. But we'd need to see what's owned. Did they do a pressure test? Do we own a pressure test? Did they do cameraing of the line? I know they did. And I know that was. Did they, did they give us the camera test? Yes. So you have a copy of the camera It was, it was interior, though. So it wasn't exterior. It was only inside inside the It was inside the building. Interior. Rick has it. I gave it to Rick. So outside the building, are they supposed to camera and man drill and pressure test that? I don't believe we own that outside. Okay. I could be wrong. But it they definitely will. There's a blockage in the pipe. Something's causing it to block. So they've got to flush that pipe and clean it and then make sure it's flowing. If it's not flowing right, they should run a camera down and see where the problem, where the blockage is. Right. Would, Jimmy, would you expect that if the pitch is not correct, that it could cause that backup or not? It could, yeah. To that extent? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the because solids don't move. Right. The right, liquid right, flows right. down, the solids will settle. The pitch is correct, if it just moves along. I mean, the pipe is, you'd be surprised how flat the pipe looks, mm -hmm. but it certainly looked like that. Who is responsible for the difference? Who is responsible for it, for in, uh, ensuring that the that the the, the the pipes are 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 set as per the design? Um, and I mean, once we have the as built, I would think that's after the point where someone should have said, you know, hey, there's a difference here. Hmm. I mean, what's who? What are the checks and balances in place? Well, unfortunately, the as built that they submitted wasn't an accurate as built. It, it showed that it was with it, within tolerance of the inverts that were given on the drawings, but in actuality, when they went in and they measured, it was far different than what the who as went and said. measured. Uh, we had GGD, um, Niche, CTA, and Case, and. They all, they all agreed that it was off from what they said it was. So at the time when it was said that it was off, who then said, it's off, but it's okay that it's off? Who would have signed off on that? Um, I, Bill Maher, who's the civil engineer, seemed to think that it shouldn't affect the way the system was working, that where, the, where they were. 
What was incorrect about the ASPO? That it wasn't, that it showed inverts higher that, that at the designed location, whereas in reality they were higher. Specifically out here in the manholes coming from the grease traps and... Those three, um, right? right? The grease trap, the one back right. there, and the one over there. Right. And maybe even the one right down there. I can't remember. I think they measured that one right there. Too. Does the Asbel show the pitch of the pipe as well? Uh, it should say what the yeah, it shows you can calculate it. Yeah, you can calculate it. And, and Chris Garcia from GGD, he did not do that design. He only did in the building, and I think he comes out 10 feet, out. Ten feet, 10 feet out from yes. the building. So that, that was the plumbing scope. And then that was taken over by the civil engineer. Which so, was niche. Which was niche. So it was his, it was, a, it was, Chris came to see what was going on out there to see what was affecting his design in the building. But, but Bill Maher did the same thing, but didn't give us anything like that. No, he didn't. And so someone signed off saying that they thought that the as bill was acceptable. Well, the as bill as submitted yeah, the as -bill was as acceptable, except the as bill was not right. But it was Bill Marr who stated that although it was not done as the as built, that it was still okay with that flow. Right. Thank you. So, <laughs> who, who do we need to be going back to today? Well, you're wrong. It is well, okay. well, 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 we don't know that we well, are. Well, that, Bill, that is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to have Bill Maher review Chris's yeah, we just got response. Today, we just so. got it today, so. so he'll look at it. He'll make his comments. Mm -hmm. We'll send it to CTA. They'll have their comments. Uh, and but but clearly, there's some things, some some concrete things in here that need to be fixed, and that'll happen. Yeah, but the thing is, something in the pipe. Right. The, right. right. Could but be the, a rock in the pipe. Yeah, yeah, right. Somewhere. But the thing is, the most <clears throat> optimal time to do all this out there was be when we take the system offline in a week and a half. You think we're going to be able to light a fire under everybody and get this out, get them out here and but get them the in those manholes? The case is going to be here, so... Be well, here. then, Bill Maher needs to review this ASAP if we're going to wait for his review before we say CTA come out here and clean up these inverts. Well, Unless we, we can do, do that ahead of time. I don't think we need to wait for Bill. I mean, okay, if this is a recommendation, this, we should yeah. tell them now. Yeah, they, okay. yeah, we'll send this to CTA yeah. immediately. With, with saying, hey, we're taking this system offline starting the 17th of April. Yeah. That's a great time for cases while they're out That's here. Yeah. Clean out these inverts yeah. and wash out this line right. and 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 um, camera it as Chris, because he told me where he, to camera it. Okay. I don't know if it's specifically in here. Okay. But I can figure that out. Um, I can figure out which SMA is. K sounds not like Niche. The, he's the civil, civil engineer. K sounds like now they, um, they're, they're coming back out with Arrow to work on the tank. They have yeah. some contract work that they need to do in the tank, yes. So they so they coming back out to do some of the work. Are they aware of the problem in the saw lines? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Steve, Steve Wynn was here, and it was mentioned that there was mortar in the, in the inverts, but poo pooed it. Yeah, so are they, I think we should ask Case. They're the ones who installed it to, to do. Uh, oh, we have to go through well, we CTA. Have to go through CTA. Through CTA. Go. Because Case is their sub. Will, will CTA even forward it on to Case? Or? Oh, I'm we'll sure they forward it on, yeah. And we, yeah, we can we'll see CTA, CTA at case. this point. We're not going to play that game anymore. But yeah, this is one of the things that CTA would pass on because they have a, a duel going on with Case. Mm -hmm. Imagine. So Perhaps. anything they can. Shoved a case, they, they, they collapsed. So they still haven't paid case? Not for phase two. To my knowledge, that's and a true this, statement. This is phase one. Yeah, this is phase one. Okay, so, but that's, we can share this with, with you guys if you care to see it. Otherwise, we're, we're going to take this, we're going to run with it, we're going to send it to CTA, we're going to see if we can get this work that Chris recommends, the actual physical work that we know needs to be done. We'll share it with Bill Maher. Um, and he's going to have to address flow, I guess. He's going to have to address GGD's comments on the system with regard to the water, I guess. So right. Deb, okay. I will need a copy of that for record, because that is public record. OK. So I will need a copy of that. How often is this happening, the backup on the building? Well, ever since the last meeting, when I had said that there hasn't been any issues in the high school, I believe it was a week after that that we began having issues in the high school. So it's happened 
two more two times in the high school and um, one more time in the middle school. And when it happens, are we doing damage to the building or does it get cleaned up okay? Or? It gets cleaned up, but um, the last time it happened at the high school, we ha actually had to relocate um, two classes. That's why he says it's interrupting your, because mm -hmm. I told him that. I said it happened in a classroom and that's just not acceptable. And when it happens in the middle school area, it actually happened over by not actually in the, in the academic portion so much, but in our entryway area in the and middle school. And it, in, and it impacted area. the, right, you saw that. So it also impacted the office area as well, which is carpeted. So that could end up having some damage. Did that get wet? Your carpeted area, Diane? I don't know. I don't, it, it was, it's difficult to tell if it went underneath. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, if they're not going to act on that, that's not a big deal to get somebody out here to flush that pipe. But someone has to go in those manholes and clean out those inverts, mm -hmm. and that's an OSHA thing. They have to be masked. Yeah, I know. They have to have, they have Still to not a big deal. It's probably a one-day drop for somebody okay. to go in there and do that. All right. And they don't even have to go in the manhole to use the flusher. The pipe, they'll get the flusher truck in there, and they'll draw everything right back, right back to the septic tank. And... You know, they're not the very deep manholes. If somebody no, they're there, not. Right? They're not. So, um, if they're not going to act on it, I think that's one of the first things that we should do is at least clean that pipe and, uh, and see if that's not the issue. If that's the issue, that might resolve all the issues. Mm -hmm. um, it, it will resolve all the issues. Well, I mean, if Larry, it could be a rock that's rolled down the pipe that everything's getting. Yeah, but, but how would, it, how would it rock in? Before it closed in, it could have been there, and then it got moved. Yeah, so no, yeah. one, no one checks that. Well, they're supposed to. They're supposed to run the man drill. They said it, it's, they got to check to see if it's in the spec. But a man drill is basically... I imagine a rock isn't in the spec. What's that? No. I imagine a rock isn't in the spec. No, no, the rock isn't. No, but... No, a guy was paving, could have moved the manhole cover, or a rock could have rolled in there, and nobody's seen it. Mm -hmm. It's possible any of those things happen, so, um, but it's not a big deal to flush that that line and, and clean it and and, 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 and fix the concrete. Yeah. All right. Do all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what's, right our, what's, our <laughs> what's our opportunity to do that in in when the stuff is uh, is offline? It, I mean, what I guess what I'm asking is. What um, deadline do we give CTA to respond before we go off and do it ourselves, and do we have the opportunity to do that? Well, I think where it's a health issue, I think we should give them a deadline, and uh, uh, because it's creating uh, havoc in the building, it could potentially turn into a major health issue. Issue, and I think that we should give them, a, you know, a deadline, you know, seven days to get it done. Uh, well, I think we should have the deadline of getting the off the line. Yeah. Yeah. The vacation. Yep. We can say something know. like that either you have it done by the end of the April vacation or the school well, we is scheduled will. to have it done and, and back charge you for that work. Yeah. So I think that's I think the way we, we should probably do something do where you confirm that they have them confirmed before vacation so that if not, we can right. line somebody right. up yeah. during that's vacation. True. That's a good right. point. Right. Yeah. Well, we need to issue that like tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is that public bid work or not? That's just something we could just hire. Yeah, you could just hire somebody to come in and do. Okay. If you said it's one day's work, I mean, how much is that? I just wonder, you know, with people who are also billing hourly, whether the, the cheaper is to just say, get the person here, do it, and be done with it, and save everyone the time. I'm not saying it's cheaper, but. Without checking prices, I don't know. Yeah, I would ballpark. say, uh, I mean, the flusher truck's probably uh, $1,500 for the day. They need to get water, so when we give them the water, um, and they don't pay for the water, um, and you know, probably twenty-five hundred dollars with a couple of guys to just make sure everything's done. Um, is is well, that something that Arrow can do while they're on site? Anyway, Lakeside, Lakeside. Arrow probably wouldn't do that. Yeah, Lakeside right. probably would though, right? Lakeside would do it. Right. Would they do it? Would they clean the mortar out and stuff like that? I'm sure they would. If they're going to go in that tank and clean that thousand gallon, you know, the thirty thousand gallon tank, they'll go in the invert and clean that. But they got to clean it, and they've got to make sure it's smooth. I mean, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. 
So that's for sure. Money. I'm a sole contract, I believe me, I'm in there. Okay, so let's try to make sure that that gets done. <laughs> I'll let Lakeside do a lot. Let's try and make sure that gets done um, during school vacation. Okay. And whatever, whatever we, whatever whatever we got to do. To it, to yeah, whatever we got to do contract wise to make that happen. Let's just make sure we've got that lined up and can hire somebody if they don't respond. All right, that sounds good. Next. The fume hoods, as I don't know if you guys know, they're offline. I, I don't have an update on that. Um, we got the manufacturer's representative. We got his information on Monday. It was forwarded to GGG, the, the mechanical engineer. On Monday, I reached out to GGD this, after, this morning and asked if he was able to talk to Prime Air, the manufacturer of the fume hood. Um, but I, I didn't receive a response from yeah. him. So I, I don't know, I don't know where that stands. Didn't the manufacturer at one point come out and look at it and do some kind of you know, examination of it and say that's No, we tested it. The, we, we spent um, some money to do, to do testing with THB. And it was um, determined that they operate within the standards and guidelines, ASHRA or whatever it is, standards and guidelines, but there's a design criteria in, in the specs that it wasn't meeting. There's also an installation criteria in the specs that it does not meet. Okay. Well, but, the but, can, but let me just finish, but what the supplier, which is General Woodworking, what he's hanging his hat on is that what they supplied is a standard fume hood, that it was submitted and approved by the design team, and that they put it in. So this whole, there's an additional closure panel that goes, supposed to go all the way to the ceiling, and that's in the specs, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't acknowledged on, on the submittal, and the submittal was approved, so he's saying, well, exactly. I mean, they don't work right. I mean, I was down in Mr. Camino's room. And, but, you but, know, but they do. I mean, they fill the right. smoke instantly if you just light a candle in it. And I mean, but, but I, I mean, I've done that. I've lit an match and, and turned it on, and it does go up. Barely, not not sufficient. I, I mean, you know, if you get any kind of significant action going, you know, maybe not a match, but Did you it doesn't do anything. Basically, the smoke just sits there. I, I watched it. I, I, I don't think it works right if a fire alarm goes off in the building when yeah. you're using it in the smoke. Yeah, clearly. Being, I, I would say it's not working right. Right. So um, that's why uh, GGD is going to talk to the manufacturer and try and work it out with them. What okay. GGD thinks is that putting a little metal cover, I don't know if you guys have seen the fume hoods, there's an opening at the top, but there's an opening under the sash. What GGD, they looked, you know, they got the test results. We was out here. They think if they just put a metal cap at the top of that opening, which will one, block it off, and two, it will it will stop. The, it will only allow one to open the sash to 18 inches above the sill, which is what it's supposed to be. That's as high as you're supposed to have it when you're doing any kind of um, uh, experiments or whatever the case might be. So it would it would. Stop it from, from throwing the sill all the way up, and it would probably increase the CFMs or the ABCs or whatever it is um, that's going through the face of that sash to be what it's supposed to be. And general woodworking can do that for us. But they're saying they don't own it, is what they're saying. GDD better make them own it. Well, that's, what I'm, that's what we're trying to do. So. Okay. So that's a status update on that. And so what's the next step for that? I'm going to, I don't know, Louis Wait needs to talk, to talk GGD to needs us. to talk to Prime Air's, the, manu the manufacturer's technical representative. Right. It's, it's going to be another battle, guys. Okay, but well, we could talk about it at the next meeting to see what happened. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, we okay. can do that. Uh, I have the lighting, there's some concern about these lights going out. I got nothing on that. So, we did have um, some status yeah, on that. Oh, good. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> Uh, next week, the uh, lighting rep and uh, manufacturer and Griffin will be coming. Uh, GGD says it's either one of two issues. It's either the sockets were, wire, were wired incorrectly on the lights or the ballast and the bulb are not compatible. 
So they're going, those are the things they're going to look at. And he said there's a common issues with lights that cause this not to burn out early. And um, it's not unusual for the sockets to be wired incorrectly, put the wrong lead on the wrong part. And it's not uncommon that they don't have the ballast correct, ballast bulbs correct. Uh, are we sure that the specification was right relative to the ballast yeah, bulb? Yeah, yeah. They're compatible. Right. Okay. So okay. When, when are they coming? Do you know? Sometime next week. We will get a time. And so with the three of them there, that should be a definitive answer. Right. Right. Okay, that's good. So the light rep, the manufacturer, Griffin, is GGD coming? No, not GGT, unless they feel like they need to. But it should be the rep and the manufacturer and Griffin should be sufficient to figure out what's going on. And is CTA aware of this issue? I I haven't told them. I mean, I don't have a. I don't recall an email. To Griffin's them. aware of the issue. So how? So are we allowed to get a sub to come back and check their work without CTA knowing about it? Is this defective work, not remedies? Is this warranty? Is this well? If it, if it was warranty, it would be out of warranty, right? Uh, well, but it's a problem that's been no, going, okay, so it's not out of warranty. Well, then I think we got to pull in CTA, and right. either PMA has got to be here, or HMFA or GGD. I mean, we can't have these guys walking around right. on their own. Right. Can we? So I don't I worry about that. So just CC. CTA needs to be involved. Okay. Send it to CTA and, and me. So how does that, so that means a letter to them saying, here's the issue, here's what we've lined up to happen. You need to be here. You need to be here, or you need to be aware of it, or whatever. I don't know what it is, but. But I guess I'll okay. need to be with them. I mean, some, either you or us, either HMFH or PMA needs to be there, I think. I think, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. A representative from. Or, or, yep. or Dave. Absolutely. Or Dave, yeah. or somebody from GCD. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. I'm I mean, trying to get Frank to be with them. So HMF, PMA, or GGD need to be with those guys? Mm -hmm. One of the three. If it needs to be me, just tell me. Let me know. Can't get the other two. You're right. <sighs> Tag. Okay, so but you will write that email to CTA, okay? Okay, we got... We did the, 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 and I'm just going down the line here, the grading softball and baseball fields. We, we had PLS come out here and they did extensive uh, surveying of the baseball and softball fields. We just got it today. So we need to pass it on to the landscape engineer, I'm sorry, the landscape architect, and get her review and response to what the survey illustrates. She started to look at it. She she um, got it this afternoon. Okay. She started to look at it. And uh, we own it in CAD. Mm -hmm. I can get it for her in CAD. Would that be easier for her to review? We can ask, but because she just, we own she it just, in CAD. She just did it. You know, she just printed out like what you did. Right. I was looking at it that way, but I can ask. But her. if it's easier, we we own it from PLS okay. as a PDF and his information super okay. you know, over mm -hmm. the top of the CAD drawings that she sent to them. Okay. So if it's easier for her to review in that, let me know. And, okay. and uh, I don't know if you saw it, Nadine. He sent you and me his invoice already. I just I'm like, dude. I you're like, not sorry. happening today. <laughs> not tonight. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Before and I need I need it in CAD because we own it in CAD. So yeah. let me know if that's helpful because okay. I'll get that for her. But that's the status there. What, what, I have a question about that. On the on the fields, the grading. <clears throat> I looked at the grading, proposed grading. And it looks like the way they graded it is for the field to grade, to drain rather, at third base. Is there a reason why they designed the field like that? You're talking about baseball, right? Yes. Yeah. It may be, it may have to do with DCR that they don't want to drain onto DCR. You know, the, I don't know. I, I, don't, I really don't. I, I can't to, give you an answer. I would just. Detail, but we can ask her that. Well, well that's, that's, the, that's the question that we have, guys, is there is a, standard installation of a baseball and softball field that it's kind of almost built like a pyramid and, and, and you go out and you find it online and you find out what the percentage slopes are supposed to be from the high point which is the pitcher's mound or the pitcher's circle in softball and that's not how these things are graded now I 
It could be the DCI. Well, well I know, but that's what we need to understand. Right. We need to understand why they don't appear to be designed per standard baseball and softball well, slopes and grades. We should first find out if that's really the case, like if they're not designed. Well, the they're... information that, that we were provided from um, Diamond Turf Athletic yeah, yeah, and I what I found online, well, it shows it shows a standard slope for a baseball and a softball field, and 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 these everything drains to the. It's, it's not like this, but there there could be a reason for that. But we need to understand okay. if there's a reason for that. I just can't remember the, but, but it is right next to that that you know that um, protection okay. zone up there. So, all right. Well, well, that's part of her review needs to answer that question, I guess, because that's you know that's. What's confusing, you know? Yeah. But I, is it installed per contract documents? Well, her, her initial take very quickly was that there were instances where it was not. Okay. So, but that was just a okay. review. So but we're going to get a report back from her right. fairly quickly. Yeah. Well, we would need to because yeah. again, if it's not per contract, then it's defective work that needs to be remedied. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's very significant implications of that. So. Right, because if it's extensive remediation, where are we with these fields right. for use? We have a huge issue. Okay, so if you can just expedite that review, that would be great. Speaking of that, uh, this may be a little bit out of order, but um, we were going to find out and make sure that the, uh, the grass guy was going to come back and do the pre-immersion. Uh, do we know where that stands? We got, no, not specifically. We got an, um, an email uh, meeting invite from CTA that they want to walk the field inside the soccer field because contrary to what I might have told you, Peter and Diane, we never signed off on the field inside the track. CSS never signed off on that. Um, so they want to walk it and see what they need to do for spring maintenance. But I was talking to Alan before the meeting, and it's like, well, they need to understand that they own spring maintenance on all of phase two grass areas, which includes the baseball field and the slope down to 170, or down to, what's 70? 70, 70. So, uh, we're well, going to say we that we need to look the, at everything. Well, we talked about the time criticality of it, him getting out here to at least do the pre-emergent fertilizer. I know, well, and, I don't uh, have an answer from tomorrow. He happen. assured us also that he would do that. He would get here. And, he who? But I think the guy, the, the, the Leahy? Leahy guy that we had here. It was Chase. Chase, the guy that no, was. No, I think Leahy. he's talking about Leahy. Leahy, right. Uh, yeah. Leahy? I don't remember. I think, I think that, that was the name. But whatever, that guy's got to get here within the next couple of days or it's going to be too late. Well, I hope it's not the next couple of days because he's not going to be here in the next couple of days. I mean, isn't that the case? Do you need to I mean, I've been trying to get, for not for nothing, I'm sorry, but I've been trying to get the landscape architect to clearly identify what we own for phase two maintenance because I'm confused on what we owned and what was done. And I've been asking since this time last week and I've got nothing. So I can go out and I can make a demand to CTA to come out here, but I'm not sure what I'm asking for. I'm not sure if I'm asking for too much, but I will do that. I will do that. I have been waiting to try to get some input from the design team and I haven't gotten it. So I'll see what I can do, but I'm kind of flying blind because I don't, I'm not crystal clear on how many growing seasons we own and what's been done and what do we own for the, you know, do, for phase two, do we own growing season of this spring and summer so that we get it next fall? Is that what we own? Did, can anybody answer that question for me? No one seems to be able to answer well, that Well, I think these guys got to get in touch with the, with I have to go through the specs with tomorrow. I mean, I've been through the specs, but I can't, I can't wrap my head around what actually was done and what wasn't done. You, you know what I mean? All I know is that they own maintenance of these things until 90 days after they've been sodded, seeded, hydro seeded, or acceptance, final acceptance, whichever is later. Well, we don't have final acceptance. So they, so, have, to get, they have to give us some input then. So when can you get that, that information by? <coughs> um, I, don't, I, happen to be, I haven't spoken with Tamar for a long time. I'm not sure what her schedule is, but I'll try and get a hold of her tomorrow and get that information for her tomorrow. Great. Whoever the guy was that we brought in here and grilled, 
um, maybe unfairly, but whatever. He assured us that he would be back in the spring to do what was appropriate, and I think what is appropriate at least is crab gas control now. And uh, when so is when, it worth when, a call when, to him at least? Well, to when find was out he here? Who, 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 when, when was he grilled? What, at, a, at a building committee meeting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it was Leahy. Was I here? Wasn't Leahy? It was no. It was a special Did I meeting. Him? It was Did a I special meeting, <laughs> and he was sitting right there. Yeah. And there was him. Pat was here also. Yeah. Yes. Basically, to figure out what the hell yeah. was, yeah. was yeah. going yeah. on in the ground. Yeah. 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 We were Typical condition. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I'll go back, I'll look at the meeting minutes, I'll figure out who it was, and I'll reach out to him. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think it would be worth a call on that guy at least to find out what his perspective is. Late. I think it's Leahy, too, because I don't think you guys have ever met anybody from Chase. I don't know if I've met anybody from Chase. I think okay. it would be Leahy. Leahy. Yeah. yeah, so that would be Kyle, so we can reach out to him. Dude, was it Kyle? He's a big guy. Well, Kyle's kind of a big guy, but he's short. Yeah, he was a big guy. Well, I know Kyle. I can reach out. He was, he was the owner. He was the owner. owner. All right. Well, that I'll, I'll just reach out to Kyle because he's the guy that I know. Okay. All right. Um, subject structure we talked about, right? Yep. Okay. The only other thing that, that, that we need to do is we need to approve the minutes and then fly through the items on the minutes from the March 3rd meeting, okay? What you have in front of you is you have... Um, Summary of the March 16th meeting, just a summary, because that was brief, just when you guys went over yep. CCD 95. And then you have the minutes from the March 3rd meeting. So these have been sent out to everybody a couple weeks ago, so we're just looking to get approval of both the summary meeting minutes, the summary minutes from the March 26th meeting, and the March 3rd minutes. As forward to everybody. We should probably do with the uh, approvals separately because a lot of people weren't at the mm -hmm. March uh, 26th. Okay, that's fine. the uh, March 26th minutes? Yep. So, um, and, and can people vote on that even if they weren't here? I'm really appropriate. Mm -mm. This is game. And so, the only people that were here were me, Peter, and Diane. Oh. Nadine, Vin, Nadine. and Judy. No, but I mean, here and here now. Well, so people that were here for the meeting and are here now. So does that mean they can't get approved because there's only three of you? Uh, there's four of us. Four of us. Four, four of that's six. Fine because that's four of us and there's what? Six majority here? of the... Majority. You're fine. You're, you're okay to do it. Yeah. Because it's four out of how many yeah. total mm -hmm. here? Okay. Okay. So I need a motion to approve these. I make motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The rest is I have a, a couple of one concern uh, about the, the, this, the track. And uh, 
I don't know if Peter went out there during the, um, when the snow was melting, um, the drain, yeah. It wasn't draining. The water was just standing around the track. And um, I don't know where it drains to, but it, it's, it's possible that it was frozen, the outlet was frozen. Um, but uh, when we had like a lot, oh, I would say this, the uh, east, well, the uh, south half of the field still had standing snow on it. On the north side of the track, it had water on it, and the water was just sitting. It wasn't draining. And um, so I don't know where the drain outlet is, but I, that, that drain that goes all the way around the track should be draining, I would think. What's it look like now? I, I haven't been out there this week. Because we just had a, a pretty big rain with a lot of melting, so. <clears throat> and I'll check it for the next meeting. And yeah, when, when I went up there, probably, I don't know, a week or so ago, a week and a half ago, but it was after the big rainstorm we had. Yeah. But all around the track where it was supposed to be draining, I mean, the water was there, but it was just standing water. So I don't know if they, the drainage was just flooded where it just couldn't seep down anymore. Do you remember we talked to Diane about it? I have been out. And yeah, and I haven't been out there this week. Should it be draining completely down or? Unless it's frozen and it's possible the outlet was frozen, but I, you know, I, I'll, I'll look at the plan and see where the drain outlet is. And I would think that at this point, all the ice is gone. And uh, Friday's rainstorm, I'll check it on Fridays and see if it, uh, it drains. Yeah. Okay, so that's just an open item. Okay, does anybody else have any comments about the minutes? We probably should get an update um, from you guys about the first uh, notice of bid. Can we go through the minutes and yeah. review them? Can we get them approved? Can we approve the March 3rd minutes? Yep. Yeah. Anyone? So, somebody you want to? Motion. motion to approve March 3rd minutes. Second. Okay, any further discussion about the minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Just going down the item one from last from last meetings for record. PCOs. That was for record. Um Roadmap to close out, that was for record. Once we revise that, we can reissue that and go over that again. Um, next item, punch list, this uh, hasn't been refuted in a while. Um, there are some punch list items outside the building that are phase two, like the stable gravel, whatever that stuff is called, uh, that needs to be looked at. But I'm not aware of anything inside the building that's still outstanding. I just lied. The discussion plate in the auditorium is not installed and may, I don't know how I'm going to get it installed. They just won't come and install it. Um, I've asked them and asked them and asked them and I've been told by Jim Goulet, yeah, we'll do it, yeah, we'll do it. We said we, they can use the district's genie machine. Nothing, no joy. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. They did install the correct louver at the gym. Um, there's a note in here about the locks on the doors at the locker rooms. And, and I got nothing on there. I, I, I didn't get anything from, uh, Robbie. from Robbie. You know, some of these things where they're, they're minor, like locks on the, on the locker room, can't we have a local locksmith come and fix them? You can have Doug Moore Duncan come and fix them. Who? Doug Moore Duncan. They're a sergeant. Represent. They're a sergeant. Okay, so... Person. I mean, if, if we give these people the opportunity to fix them three times, then we should get And there's fixed. nothing to really fix on those locker room doors. We just wanted to understand why they're locked the way they are. The, the, locked the way they are, yeah. There's why nothing there's really locks to fix. On some of the doors and not on right. the others, but there are these, like the entrance, there's a lock on the entrance to see if the boys or girls, uh, I but there isn't right. on the other one. Right, I explained all of this, I gave them a diagram. It's on the documents, on the spec. Is that what the spec says? Is that what the spec calls for? I believe so, yes. 
But I, I gave all this information to Robbie McCabe at, is that his name? That's his name. And I asked for, can you please tell us why this is designed this way? And, I, and I've got nothing. I don't have anything. And so wouldn't that be on you guys? Yeah, it is. Just, is it in here? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's on the punch oh, list. Punch list. It's if you look at the top of page two. Um, the only remaining punch list items are installation of the discussion plate at the auditorium and the installation of the correct exterior louver at the exterior oil tank slash gym wall location. That's complete. Page of HPMA to investigate the status of the locks or lack thereof on the locker room doors. Okay. So I can resurrect that email string, Deborah, if that would be helpful yeah. for you. There are some locking issues um, that have not been resolved. And I don't know if it's, is it Shannix? Is that the, who, who is, who is, in, who is involved with the, you know, the, the swipe cards? What? That would be Shannix. Shannix. So. It would be Griffin, actually. It was Griffin's sub. That so that we had, I believe, some Shannix representatives here well over a month ago now. I had an issue with the. Uh, Back door of the library suddenly not working. It was communicated. They took a look at it. It's, it's the power supply. So it's the power supply thing. <coughs> so when Griffin comes next week, can, they, can you add that to their list to review? We can ask them. We can tell them about it. We can ask them to have Shannon's come with them. So you know, I mean, it, it was pointed out directly to them. We tried to resolve this. Nobody seemed to know what the hell power supply was at that door. This is that whole back and forth. Oh, and back. We got 27 it, issues, 27 emails on this, and I got nothing. Yeah, but if Griffin's going to come. But, but the power supply, they're, they're Shannon saying, we don't own the power supply. Long Island Fire Door owns the power supply. So they took a picture of the power supply, and Long Island Fire Door is like, I didn't That's supply that power right. supply. Our power supply. Uh, so what did I, Deb Share put in the power supply? Oh, I, I Griffin, don't know. Griffin. Griffin's responsible for it. Well, but but I don't Long think it Island. is. It's part of the door hardware. It's not part of Shannix. Shannix only does the card reader. They don't do the power supply that goes the card that connects the card reader to the door. So I got this from everyone. But it does seem like it would be Griffin. Who's the who's the so so I, I I don't know. I think Griffin puts in the power supply, so Supplied by Long Island Fire Door. Supplied by Long Island Fire Door. And then Shannix comes and connects their card reader right, right. to the Griffin Supply Power Supply that is supplied by Long Island Fire Door. Right. What's it on the, what, uh, what is it on the electricals? Yeah. And it's Griffin's responsibility. Yeah, it's Griffin's that, responsibility. It, it, but it worked. Not, but, but if they say so that now, it's the power supply that's bad, it is my swipe card on the back library door. It. There is no But Griffin access. can tell us what And the story nobody is. has access. But it's they not. couldn't. They so can't tell us what it's the story is. So it's the power supply that's failing, correct? Who installs the power supply? That's the Griffin, problem. I guess. And that's Griffin. the one that we have to deal with because right. the problem, the bottom line But they don't problem, supply the power supply. Who cares? But they they installed install install the, install install the power it. supply. They didn't, they didn't buy it. They didn't buy it. It's not there. They were given to them by Long Island Ford and Fire Door under a separate but contract who, with CTA. Okay, so... Someone owns it working. CTA owns it working. Good luck to me. <laughs> Okay. Well, CTA is not going to act on it. Then we have to get somebody else who's going to act yeah. on it. I mean, that's that's the bottom well, line. Griffin, Griffin, will, Griffin should say what has to happen. I mean, I, again, I can resurrect that 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 email string. It's that's just that's just like. I mean, it's like the, the doors of the locker rooms. Okay, but but the the point that we need to make is that you know I think we're the place where you know maybe CTA gets one more shot, but we're done talking about it and right. we need to just get somebody else to come in and fix it and so you know tell CTA about it tell them you know just like we did with the I rest think, of the I stuff they're, they're you got a certain amount of days to do this otherwise we're doing it ourselves I think that's the place where we need to be for every one of these items right that CTA is dropping the ball on it's we're done you know it's fix it or we're gonna get it fixed ourselves but but this there should be this, no this, more. This, there should be no this more back door. In the future, when something Time out, happens, this door issue at the media center is after the warranty was over, because this door was working fine until a couple months ago, right? 
So this is going to be, and that was the whole thing. It's like Long Island Fire Door said, okay, the power supply is under warranty until March, but the labor isn't. I'm like, okay, no problem. Just give me the power supply. And then we got into this whole back and forth. Well, I don't know what power supply that is. I didn't give you that power supply. So now I'm in April. Let's see what happens now. But the claim was put in in March. Right. So I'll see. Let's see what I can do. You, you should take a job from CTA. Yeah, right. That'll be the day. <laughs> it's just I, I tried to track these things down. I went over and around and and I couldn't get anywhere. And then 27 other things show up and, and it just, it is what it is. So I will resurrect all this stuff. Mass chips okay, in the middle. Okay, so I, I do want to follow up on this point. Uh, you know, some of these things just, I, you know, I, I don't want to have things lingering forever. Mm. So some of these things just need to be fixed. We'll do our best to recoup the costs. And if we can't, we can't. But they need to be fixed. So if the stupid door doesn't work, and CTA doesn't want to come and fix it, and we're going to spend you know, the next five months arguing about warranty or not warranty, I don't want to do that. I just want to call somebody, get them in here, get the stupid thing fixed, and you know, we'll try and recoup the costs as best we can. You know, but it needs to be fixed. We need to be out of the building. You guys need to go home. You guys need to go home. So Is there anything else that anyone can think of that's yes. broken? There was there was an install that I mentioned, um, but things that we don't have complete parts of. So, you know, again, only the places that I know, but in the library there were two shelves, freestanding shelves, and the top was never... But my understanding on that, Linda, is that those shelves were extra. Those weren't part of the package, and what was there, they put together what they had as extra shelving. That but wasn't... They, but they, it, didn't, it didn't come as complete shelving. Then so we'll just take it out, then. It's, what I'm saying is it's, it's, it wasn't, extra. it was extra, and they were just putting it up so you had extra shelving. Okay. It, you know, the top part, it just, it, it, okay. it was just extra. Okay. Well, just go buy the extra piece. That right. But you can utilize the shelves without the top shelf, right? Don't, they, isn't there two shelves below it? If I'm, isn't well, that right? Well, the, the, there's, it's, it's not, yes, it can be utilized, but, it, and the second part was that they weren't installed. So they, I just finally carted things away to our storage room that were never installed. So one shelf was partially installed, one was just a frame, and so I, you know, so that, those were things that were mentioned, you know, quite some time ago. So um, when we talked to Rob about them, he said that they. They weren't part of the contract. They just were supplied by. Well, the if they were supplied, then you give us all the parts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Well, we take all the parts away. Or you don't, okay. So, I don't okay. Know. You so the, the, that will, those are my options. Or just hire a local contractor to come in and get the parts he needs. Right, but that, but I'm not going to do that. You guys. That's nothing right. to do with right. you. Right. I I agree. But okay. you know, these lingering things just need to be wrapped up. Not, so. What else? Anything else? What else do we need to know? Just, you know, the FF me, um, again, like the tables, stuff that has been broken that I've contacted Rob Fogarty about numerous times. Can you guys follow up with Rob on that? Can do, do we these tables that? are breaking. That table? Right? Yeah. yeah. That one. And then we had another one there. We had another one two weeks ago. Is it the exact this, same this place? Kind of line? Yeah. We took pictures. I sent them pictures. Um, does that, does that that I, I don't know. Fault, she didn't so. involve me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I contacted Rob. Rob he hasn't responded to you about it. Okay, we'll, we'll check. We'll check. Okay. Um, like, like I don't know. I the know that. Back. that table was back from, I think, since the fall. Yeah, that table's yeah. been sitting there for a while. Oh, since the fall. We haven't been able to use that. I'm sorry. Since, like, the fall, we haven't been able to use that. The one okay. thing that we didn't discuss was the um, amazing I'm falling asleep. But the starting of the the um, post on Osa. If we can ever get through the minutes, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. 
Mass chip submittals for record. I have an update. I'll do, say it briefly. CTA did submit their paperwork. HMFH has put a, given it to their mass chips consultant. She is reviewing it. She also has the final CX, uh, the commissioning report, which she is also reviewing. So um, CTA, C, that's that's closed. I mean, it needs to be reviewed by their consultant, and once it's reviewed, it will go off to mass chips for submission. Uh, septic tank repair, I think we've talked about that plenty. Intercom and gym, my understanding is that's done. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's happy camper, happy, happy. Nice. Um, exterior bleachers, um, do we have an update on that? On the exterior bleachers, what you guys are doing? Um, yeah, the guy came up, he did not. He sent me one quote, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. He's supposed to send me another. I sent him three emails that the meeting was tonight, but I haven't received them. So I'll have to wait till the next meeting. And he came out and looked at all the pads and all the locations where you can put them so he knows what size they need to be and all that stuff, right? He came out, right? He came out. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll just make a note that you reached out to him. You're still waiting for a quote. Yep. And he's the next meeting. The, the athletic field availability, I think that really kind of kind of goes around, wraps around with the survey. So I'll make the update note that we what we what we discussed on the surveys and put it in there. Okay, here we go. Porcelanosa. Actually one more item. Right? But um, it was an item that I sent to Alan um, uh, last week, and that is regarding the workmanship on the woodwork oh, and right. particularly on the wood caps. Uh, am I giving up on those? Are we just basically saying as we're done? Or are, is there something to be done there? I think I sent you his response. Yeah, I which saw his was, response. You know, that's, that's, that's wood. Yeah. Um, although it seems awfully extreme. Uh, I think it's pretty extreme. I don't think that's really a great response, but I don't know what to do about it exactly. Right. Well, they are sending some. Um, Somebody's coming over April break to fix that bench, which he did admit was a problem. Um, the, entire, the entire panel fell off. <laughs> which bench is this? One of these. And the stairs. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, what the first thing is that it was like in either the April 2013 or, or February 2013. Okay. They replaced some of those caps because they were going like right, this. Right, right, right. So he's coming on April break. So, April so, break. So, yeah, it's so, so maybe we'll have him look at that. Also. I mean, when he did the caps, were they acclimated properly before he came? Yeah, he happened. left them in. Did he, he left them in the building for a period of time. And so how could wood did. move that much? I have no I, idea. I mean, what kind of wood is it? I mean, it's just veneer, right? But it's just, what, what is No, the, I think that's maple. Maple. What is maple. maple. It's maple. It's maple it's doesn't move that much. No. I mean, that thing moved close to a half an inch. Yeah, I mean, If they were tight, I don't know if they were, but I think they were. If they were tight, then I think we'll close to I think they were in. tight. How can that happen? It, and he says that within you know three weeks now, it's going to be in the opposite direction. Well, I'm curious to know if that's going to be tight in three weeks. I don't think so. We'll I mean, see if it's not. Guess. <laughs> Will he hold them responsible for it if it's not? Well, I don't know. Okay, so I don't know what to do about that. Do we just basically give up on it? Well, let's see what happens with the next season. Uh, let's see if they close up. Is what? When it gets warmer, let's see if they do close up. I mean, I don't, they do, because I, I don't remember them being that bad. I don't no, remember them being right. like that. They, they clearly were better. They, 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 were, they were decent. Remember, but, but they, they were. Like, were like, right, and so he came out and he made them smaller. He... he Took those ones out, right? Yeah. Put new ones in that are smaller, and now the and smaller now is big, smaller. Yeah. 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 Making them go farther away. So maybe he didn't act on like the new piece. That well, that's what that's what I thought. Yeah, I think he had it all in the building for a period oh, okay. of time. And the only the only real concern I have, other than the fact that it's really crappy workmanship and it looks terrible, is that it's sharp. Right. So maybe could hurt themselves. You know, those those miter joints are sharp. So I am a little concerned about that. Well, maybe we'll just have to talk to them again. All right. Maybe they can. Okay. Now you're on. Okay. All right. Update on the the porcelainosa. Um, we had a walkthrough out here on the and I'm going to do this quickly. 
Uh, on March 27th, we had a walkthrough. Two people showed up, Lambrian Construction Corp. and our buddies Castellucci. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Who um, you to show up on that? What's that? Is it an outfit that we wanted to show up? Or no, or no, it? it's just Castellucci's the one that put the initial stone on the building. Oh, yeah. That was the I, joke, Larry. I knew that. <laughs> I got past the joke that I was moving on to the next oh. question. Now, we, we, we thought we might see, um, what was the one? Pillar. Uh, Pillar. Pillar. People who originally because, bid. Yeah, the ones that, that bid it to CTA, but they kind of fell off the face of the earth. They never got the drawings. They never reached out or any of that. That, that walkthrough was on the 27th. The bid documents were available on March 24th. There were two addenda issued. And uh, one was addenda number one, which just had minimal stuff. And it, um, it had the bid, the pre-bid walkthrough, sign-in sheet, some WB and the equal documents that we had missed. Uh, asked that they identify the subcontractors, and um, we gave them some ex uh, additional information on securing the existing and new rock saw insulation <coughs> before they put the stone up. We want to make sure that they have a way when they take those um, the horizontal bars down before they put the new hanging system up that they that they secure any all the rocks off so it doesn't fall out whether it's new or whether it's existing so we we um, issued some additional for reference information on that and then on the unit price sheet we gave them an estimated quantity of the of the insulation that they were going to um, have to change out and then we got a unit price should it be more we estimated 1500 square feet that they would probably have to take down and replace and then we got a square foot price if it was over that uh, then we had one other addenda, which was just information on the clips that are going to go onto this rain screen to hold the Tahanto, the letters, those aluminum letters that we've been waiting for. Yeah, so that was uh, addenda number two. Uh, we had the bid opening on Monday, the 7th, last Monday. Or was that this Monday? Was this this Monday? Monday. That was this Monday. Um, we had one bidder. We had one bidder. It was Lambrian Construction Corporation out of Westwood. Uh, he came in at $247,000. Um, so what PMA did today was we finalized the contract between the district and Lambrian that we put together for the bid package. Um, we have it in a FedEx envelope from our Braintree office to the Westwood office, three hard copies, ready for Lambrian execution. We, we FedExed it overnight today. It should be in their office tomorrow. We hope that they might get it back to us Friday so we can get it executed by you guys and get it back to them on the 14th. Why, you ask? Because our whole schedule, we're trying to stay in our schedule. We have a really tight schedule um, because we have the drawings, uh, submittal and approval by HMFH of the, of the drawings is four weeks. Fabrication of the hanging, <coughs> portions of the hanging system that need to be fabricated, <coughs> the porcelain tiles is four weeks. Shipping is four to five weeks. Installation is six weeks. That equals 19 weeks. We had the bid opening on Monday the 7th. We say, okay, we're gonna execute the contract by Monday the 14th, which is next Monday. 19 weeks from 414 is August 25th. That's the <coughs> teachers come back. That, that doesn't take into account any um, overlap or parallel um, work while we're waiting on shipment. He can do some construction. Well, what I, I asked him at the bid opening, I asked Alex from Lambrian if Porcelanosa would ship over the hanging part. We talked about this, you and I. If, if they would ship over the hanging part so he could take the rocks, take the existing down, put the new rocks all up, put the hanging system and just be ready to hang tile. What Alex said to me is that he didn't know if Porcelanosa would do that because they'd want to ship everything at once. I mean, he didn't rule it out completely, but he wasn't like, oh yeah, that's a great idea, okay. which I thought it was a great idea. Yeah. But that was his reaction. But maybe you, HMFH, can reach out to Porcelanosa and ask if, if you know, if Lambry's in a position to do it that way, would they be in a position to, to ship it that way? The hang, not the clips. The clips, you kind of do it as you. Right, no, just the, you the, 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 the rails. Yeah, 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 I thought, yeah because yeah, the rails, yeah. because then they'd be able to take down these existing rails, they'd be able to fix all the insulation right. and get the yeah. new rails up while we're sitting here waiting for the show. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
And can so we also ask them to, um, if they could start on the front first, so if we are sort of oh, yeah. behind yeah. schedule, yeah. that That's the front point. is sort of done yeah. right. in the back. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We can do it on five years for that. Right. right. No, 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 let's not say that. <laughs> Just Please. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Just so, but, but, okay. and, and guy, I guess so. <laughs> the, the guy Alex who was here for the pre-bid was very complimentary of the building, of the porcelain osmosis system. He asked a lot of pertinent questions. We went up on the roof and looked really closely at what was going on, at the uh, with the, how they how he's going to connect, and so I think yeah, yeah I like we, the guy I think we love that. Very interested and very diligent about right. the questions he was asking. Like so that's where we are, and we're just going to push, push, push. Okay. Push harder. Even August first. And, and just, just, just so you're aware, the the um, the letters for the the letters for the school were mounted to. We, we originally they were mounted to the building. Yeah. Um, they're going to be mounted to rails. And then the rails are going to be attached to the clips that come out of the building. Just so you know. So we own the we own the installation and we own the letters. We don't own the rails. So there'll be two aluminum um, square tubes, so to speak. It, it, it won't be a Why big the deal. change? Just because of the change of the tile, right? Because right. we can't drill through into the yeah. Tile we can't. The Who um, is installing those? Randy Cassandra yeah. Sign, the guy who put all the other signs on the building. So we should get a cost from him for the rails ASAP because right. that should be figured into mm -hmm. this whole rain screen thing. Right. And hopefully that, you know, that should be short sure money to just do it on the side. Do you need the language to go to the executive session? Are we ready to do that now? Are we ready to, uh, are we done? I'm done. Okay. So, so do we need to adjourn this meeting or no, we do that? You go into executive so and then we What we, we do is meeting. we haven't officially adjourned the meeting, we're going to go into executive session. And then, do we want to reconvene into open or not? Do we need to reconvene? No. Probably don't need to reconvene. All right, no so vote we can't will happen or anything one. in regards to the amendment for tonight. We don't want to so vote on it. So we can close this one. So no, what you're just going to do is you're just going to do a motion. So you're going to say to conduct strategy session in preparation for contract negotiations with contractual services between Berlin Boylston uh, Building Committee and PMA and to not reconvene into open session. Okay, you want to give me that so I can read it? Or Do we need to say so it? Just, meeting just first? Somebody can just motion it. Can you can just, then you can send that to me? Said, I make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, so then the discussion is? I just asked, do we need to schedule the next meeting before they leave? Are we meeting again or is this the last meeting? Uh, no, we're meeting again. <laughs> So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do we adjourn this? No. Then, no. Not, no. No. Uh, we'll we'll want to the next. Actually, the next day. As as far as your minutes go, do you would you reflect that we are moving into a executive session. session? And I need and that language. It. And not to convene it. Oh, right. Is it the same language that we did last time? Yes. No, this one's a little different. Well, can you send that to me? Because yep. I didn't catch it. Yep. Actually, the last but but, but do we adjourn the regular old meeting? Yeah, but the language is a little different. We don't. It's still it's still it's still it's still okay. Well, so, I just want to make sure that my mind is following your guys' lead here. Okay. Right? okay. No idea. So first, let's we'll schedule the next meeting. Next meeting. All right. So let's schedule the next oh, meeting. Okay. okay. So so we're not coming back. I'm just going to note on here Forever? that.